Hello from the One True Scale. This video shows a diorama I made in 144 scale of two C-47s dropping paratroopers. The subject was D-Day early on June 6, 1944, when 13,000 American paratroopers made night drops into Normandy, France. The first of more than two million troops that pushed the Germans out of France, leading to their defeat in 1945. You can search the web for articles, Wikipedia, images, and videos of this iconic event. For Christmas 2020, I made an N-scale model train layout for my local bakery. The theme was a French town with time-lapse changes through five decades starting in 1920. Buildings, vehicles, trains, and aircraft were changed. The 1940s was the German occupation and later the Allied D-Day invasion. In the skies above the town, Stukas and Heinkels changed to C-47s. I just needed to add the dropping paratroopers, which turned out to be a major scratch-building effort. My diorama had been popular since early December, but kind of stalled in the 1940s due to train running issues. I had to hurry with the C-47s and parachutes because I was afraid that the exhibit theme was going to look like French Christmas with Hitler. I did get the Allied ships, tanks, and planes installed in time to show the Germans retreating, and I was pretty pleased with these scratch built parachutes. Internet image searches show dioramas of paratroopers before takeoff, about to jump landing, and fighting. One reason I made this video is that I didn't see anything of the actual paratrooper drop or the shoot opening sequence. I have a lot of photos from the installed diorama. Unfortunately, none of them are really great. Night shots had problems with lights, background, and reflections. Day shots were even worse. My clearest shots are the construction photos I took in my kitchen, which I show later. Each plane has a paratrooper in the doorway, one falling on static line, and four with chutes opening. Real C-47s dropped 15 to 18 paratroopers. The lines suspending the parachutes came out well for the starboard plane, but is about 50% too low for the port one. Double stick tape wouldn't hold the last parachute to the window on a, a cold, humid night, so I had to use super glue with somewhat sloppy results. I skipped a lot of details in the rush to get this done and installed. Very few of the T5 parachutes used by the US on D-Day were white. I should have painted mine light khaki with tiny brown and green spots. Real parachutes had at least 24 shroud lines. Real paratroopers had a harness, a reserve chute, weapons, and lots of other bulky equipment that would show even in this scale. Still, I think the combined effect is impressive, and I hope other ambitious modelers will try something like this. I had a spare 13th paratrooper, so I decided to try something different. I hung him low on the window above an Allied convoy that was about to be ambushed by German tanks. The next day I was going to hang his chute on the tree in front of the bakery in a scene reminiscent of the paratrooper of Sam Mariglis, but another fate intervened. The tape gave way just as a passenger train was going by under him. He, he dropped and was dragged to a sad end. In the 1970s, I was an aerospace engineer doing 
wind tunnel, and flight simulator testing. I also was a hang glider pilot, but I never parachuted out of an airplane. I had to use a little of the science I learned back then to get the parachute opening sequence to look right. An internet search on D-Day parachute drop will show you lots of photos and videos. Many of them are from modern reenactments, but they're still pretty helpful. One challenge is that the action covered in this diorama happens in the first five seconds, so you really have to study the video carefully. I did find a good side view photo of the shoot opening sequence. The image is licensable, so I only show it as an alignment tool heavily blurred by my cutting board with my model parachute superimposed. I scaled the image to 12 feet equals one inch using the 25 foot door to rudder distance of my model. The jump interval looks very tight, maybe a half second. I numbered the jumpers by how many half seconds from their jump. I added four more parachutes outside the photo based on behavior I saw in other videos and photos. Note that all jumpers are falling at about 12 feet per half second, which is about right. Well, what happens to these 10 jumpers in five seconds? They all start with 15 foot static lines shown in green attached to the upper door corner and to the bag containing their backpack chute. Jumper Zero is suddenly falling weightlessly and being pushed back by a 100 mile an hour airstream. Jumper One's static line just exposed his chute to the airstream. Jumper Two's canopy is exposed in a curl, but shroud lines are still playing out. Jumper Three's canopy is starting to fill and the shroud lines are taut. Jumper 4's canopy is about to open, producing noticeable drag and reducing weightlessness. Still with considerable velocity, Jumper 5's canopy opens with shock loads producing several Gs. Jumper 6 has slowed considerably from the shock load, and his canopy is starting to flat top from dynamic effects. Jumper 7 and 8 have stable full canopies and may be swinging due to dynamic effects. Jumper 9 has stopped swinging and is descending vertically without much forward velocity. My placement of the parachutes is based on the forces that should be acting on them. The forces determine the acceleration, velocities, positions, and angles of the parachutes. Gravity in green produces a constant downward force. Drag force in blue opposes the parachute's velocity. During chute opening, drag changes depending on the canopy shape and size. Drag increases with the square of the velocity. If the parachute goes twice as fast, drag will be four times as much. Jumper 9 has balanced forces which produce no acceleration, just a constant downward terminal velocity. All the other jumpers have various unbalanced forces causing accelerations in yellow, mostly opposing horizontal velocity. Complex computer simulations can predict these forces, accelerations, velocities, and trajectories, but I'll show you some rough old school methods. Note that this picture could either be 10 jumpers who jumped at half second intervals, or a multiple exposure taken at half second intervals of the same jumper. If it is 10 jumpers, imagine you could see their smoke trails in the air, like these red curves. The C-47 is flying 100 miles per hour, roughly 72 feet or six squares per half second. Blue line and rectangles show the position of the door when jumpers one, two, and three jumped. If the jumpers and chutes behaved identically, the trajectories would all be the same curve, just shifted by six squares. The curve is tightest between five and six, where rapid deceleration occurs. 
Another old school way to analyze this is to use the moving reference frame of the C47 and see what accelerations would cause a single jumper to decelerate and descend at one square per half second. This method is similar to a 1960s game played on graph paper called racetrack. At every half second, appropriate accelerations can be added to the jumper. Accelerations change the jumper's velocity vector, which is plotted as how many squares the jumper moves in each direction every half second. For 0 through 5 average together, I use 1 square down and 1 square rearward applied at the beginning for gravity and drag. At 5, I apply 2 squares rearward for high opening shock drag. I apply 1 square rearward at 7, 9, and 11 off the page. The total 6 rearward squares cancel the C47's velocity, still leaving the jumper descending at 1 square per half second. I'm sure parachute jumpers, designers, and testers can find a few flaws with my old school science, but it's probably good enough for educational purposes and for model builders. In the end, I really liked the chute positions, but decided a jump interval of one second was more realistic for Normandy and 100 pounds of equipment. So I split the jumpers into evens and odds and gave one to each plane. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Modelers should watch my construction video too. The one true scale over and out. Geronimo!